the Lawson Bowling Club. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to cross to her shortly. Anthony, uh, an update, <laughs> I think, by those cheers. We know what you're going to say. Yeah, she'll be shushing her opponents so that she get all supporters to get these numbers up. This was a seat that Rosa Sage won for the uh, Liberal Party last time. She had the low, second lowest first preference vote for the Liberals. There was an independent, the Greens and Labor all polled strongly. The independents got 18%. It's not there this time. The, the Labor vote is solidified. She's ahead on first preferences. There's always a significant, significant Green vote in that election. And therefore, um, without a, a significant increase in her first preference vote, Rosa Sage was always in trouble in that electorate. So uh, Trish Doyle is the new Labor member for Blue Mountains, continuing the seat's uh, history since 1976. No, no, it's going against history because for once Blue Mountains isn't a bellwether because it's being won by Labor but without Labor forming government. Uh, uh, just breaking in, Anthony, I understand that Luke Foley is calling Mike Baird at this very moment to concede, so we will be hearing from the leader shortly, hopefully. Let's, though, first cross to Trish Doyle, who is in the Blue Mountains at the Lawson Bowling Club, <laughs> pointing to her supporters. Hi. Trish Doyle. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I still haven't had the phone call um, to concede defeat, so I, I still must say I'm cautiously optimistic, <laughs> but feeling very happy. You sound like Gladys here on the panel. Um, are you, uh, it was always going to be tight. Both sides were saying that. What do you think it was that got you over the line or that you're hoping will get you over the line? It's been working with the community for the last four years. It's about listening to people. It's about the community telling me they would like their local representative to consult with them. So they want a member who will represent them in a loud and clear, strong voice. And that's what I will do. Um, they have talked to me about protecting the environment. They've talked to me about TAFE education, they've talked to me about keeping public assets in public hands. So um, they've been very unhappy about the representation they've got and uh, I've been there to listen. And how strong was the anti-privatisation sentiment in the Blue Mountains? Um, it was huge actually. I'd say after education, after TAFE, that the issue of pri the privatisation agenda, not just privatising our poles and wires, but the privatisation ideology of the Conservative government really worried people. So, you know, cutting our TAFE system um, by stealth and our nurses and doctors worried about moving towards an Americanised health system. So it's about that sort of ideology creeping through. People have been talking to me about privatisation and their concern for quite some time. You mentioned the TAFE cuts. Uh, how much does TAFE affect people in your electorate there? Well, I've worked ever since 2012 with our local TAFE campuses, with our students, with our teachers, on um, people concerned about what might be happening to the outreach courses, the outdoor recreation course. Um, it's, it's a huge part of linking education in with employment. So when they first started making cuts and people came to talk to me, um, it was really clear that they wanted to actually have an affordable, accessible um, and quality public education system, not to see public money actually um, sent off to private providers that didn't offer that quality. Yeah. Trish Doyle, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, as they say, grinners, and speaking of winners, Luke Foley has. We are